scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Oh, 
using you to find relevance we are not using you to manage our fears and insecurities you are bigger than that you are bigger than that for you are bigger than what we say say you are bigger than what success you are the reason why we are successful you're not part of our lives you own everything we're not giving you the most important part of our lives we're giving you everything 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 hallelujah lord we love you we bless you we love you and we bless you. This is part of our worship. We love you. We're not just thinking it, we're saying it. We love you. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have perfected praise. Lord, we are too grateful to allow stones take our place. We are too grateful to allow the trees worship you. We are too grateful. You have done well and we honor you. You have done well and we bless you. You have done well beyond our prayers, beyond our fasting, beyond our levels of obedience. Beyond our levels of understanding, you have glorified your name. And we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we 
To give thanks to the Lord. Thanksgiving is a sign of humility, just like prayers. It's an acknowledgement of His sovereignty above and beyond our limitations. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. God is not an addition to our lives, He's the reason. Don't 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 look at God as you see the reason why our worship is not perfected. Is because we think we have done so much then God added to it so we worship him as colleagues I don't worship him as a colleague he is the king he is my king take God out of the equation of my life I am absolutely useless there's nothing embarrassing about this if you are ashamed to acknowledge the might of God the psalmist said if the Lord had not been on our side he said now may Israel say if the Lord had not been by my side. Please in one minute I'd like you to open your mouth and count your blessings. Don't pretend he has not been faithful. Take your eyes away from that which you think he has not done and acknowledge him. How can I be so ungrateful? You have done well. You have changed my life. You have given me what money cannot give. You have given me your presence. Look what you've done in this ministry. We acknowledge you. We are so blessed. Our songs are found rest. Oh Lord, we give you thanks. Sing it with me. When others are complaining, seeing the things they think you have not done, we are grateful. How dare we complain after all you have done? For we are so blessed, and our souls are found. Oh Lord, we give you One more time, just the voices. Worship Him. Reflect on the many things he's done in and through your life. For all you have done, we are so blessed and our souls. Jesus Christ we thank you you are our confidence in this place tonight it is because of your presence that we know lives will be changed tonight we have come to hear you speak hallelujah Lord Jesus accept our coming here tonight as a reflection of our inadequacy in ourselves Accept our coming tonight as a recognition of our limitations. Accept our coming tonight as a communication of our dependence on you. For we will not be here if we did not trust you. Lord, we trust you. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This for someone is the message God came to give you tonight. This act of worship. Please listen to me, brothers and sisters. The key to more of anything in your life is gratitude. The key to more of anything in your life, anything good, is gratitude. He took five loaves and two fish. He lifted it up. And the Bible says he gave thanks. You know, sometimes 
we live in a world where there is such an appetite for more more money more fame more this more that and now god wants to increase us motion is a sign of life stagnation is a sign of death so god wants us to move forward but you see god's system is such that you never leave where you are to the next level until you thank him sufficiently for where you are hallelujah guilt not guilt in a negative way will never allow me to dare complain before god there are too many stories in my life that show the faithfulness of god i will be wicked and heartless to ever claim he's not faithful so for me if i do not have a language of gratitude i rather not speak i rather sing and worship him there are too many reasons in my life i am a testimony of how god can take a man from nothing to something how would i be so stupid to complain shout around he's giving me what money cannot buy his presence listen if you have a property they call you a rich man but someone can bully you and collect it the government can seize it from you are we together if you have investments all over the world they call you a business mogul but everything can crash and fail in one day are we together if you have a political position it is not infinite it is not everlasting are we together even if you are a monarch the reality of death and time can catch up with you but when he gives you his presence there is no way to find it and collect it from you it's not a commodity that belongs to this earth realm it's a reality that is beyond this realm it will buy anything the presence of God is the master capital it's bigger than land bigger than degrees bigger than anything please believe me the most expensive commodity is the presence of God when you have it you have access to kings and their treasures when you have it you have access to businessmen and their wisdom when you have it you have access to royalties and their sacrifices they will bring to you the rewards of their years of labor and beg you to collect it in exchange for the presence of God never never you think the presence of God is just a way of feeling spiritual then you quickly feel spiritual then you concentrate on what you think will make you successful no only a fool does that the presence of God gave the nation of Israel gold and silver in one day what they could not get in 430 years the presence of God became for them a pillar of cloud by day and of fire by night hallelujah you know sometimes when you hear a man of God talk so much about the presence of God please look up it's easy to think the man of God is speaking because his life is now comfortable you know that's what people think in church when a preacher is talking like this you know they feel ah, you are doing well you are enjoying why will you not talk about the presence of God but you need to ask how the person started and what brought the person to the current level are we together what you are seeing now is not a seed it's a harvest are we together yes never covet any man's glory pay attention to the story the story reveals the process the story reveals the sacrifice 
we live in a generation where we are obsessed with results and that is important but we focus so much on the end of the results we want finished products but we do not pay attention to how the things are made hallelujah what you are learning will give you anything you admire now so forget about the admiration and focus on the training the training will inevitably bring you to the place of glory father help us tonight in the name of jesus bless you good evening everybody just turn to your left and right and tell your neighbor good evening hallelujah praise the lord all right pick up your pen paper let's get to work there's a lot to do the glory revealed part two last week we started a series the glory revealed it's a series that is supposed to guide us excuse me and teach us the principles how a man's life can become a reflection of all the possibilities that consist in god hallelujah please try to get last week's teaching is free you can get it after the service especially for those who are online following us there are so many people and we love you you're part of us the lord honor you in jesus name and i spoke to us last week and i started laying a foundation that the pursuit of godliness please listen the pursuit of godliness the pursuit of relevance in the kingdom begins with an encounter say an encounter the journey of a believer does not start with learning principles and laws and formulas business people teach you that if you want to arrive get formula a add it to b and that's important but anytime you begin to study anything outside of an encounter first it will waste your time and lead you to error because the kingdom is regulated by a person, not just systems. It is a person who created the systems. So you have to encounter the person Christ. Are we together? So your journey does not begin by learning about tithes and offerings, all the laws that we shared in the series before this. They are very important. But you must start with an encounter. When you meet the person, then he will guide you. Because the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. There is a method. There is a formula. It seems right to a man. But the Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death. And um, we discussed the concept of glory. I'm just doing a quick recap. How that glory refers to the essence of a thing. The character. Are we together? The, 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 the word glory is from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek word is doxa. Is a reflection of the true nature when the true nature of a thing is expressed we call it the glory of that thing are we together now and then another interesting understanding of the word glory is the possibilities that that's the one i want us to pay attention to is the one that is relevant in this series the glory of a man means all the possibilities that are inherent within the man the glory of this mic is revealed in its ability to amplify sound are we together when you go to buy this mic now and they tell you this singular mic i'm holding is say two hundred thousand. you look at this until you connect it to something then you will see the potentials are we together this is two hundred thousand, for instance because it has an ability to amplify my sound so i can stand here and speak and people down the second overflow and everywhere can hear so the glory of this mic is the possibility inherent in it are we together now so when we talk of the glory of god it refers to all the possibilities that are encapsulated in the person god and that is reflected in the person christ because christ is the full expression of the image of god are we together so jesus came to open us up reveal to us the glory of the father an example of the manifestation of that glory was seen in the healings when he came to people they never knew he had the supernatural ability to heal and so he would tell someone pick up your mat stand up and go glory revealed i did tell us last week that until glory is revealed it cannot be appreciated 
glory that is concealed cannot be appreciated. If you buy a phone, the pack is only a packaging, but the real product is inside. If you keep the pack, even if it's for 10 years, it will not profit you. But when you open it, then you see the content and you appreciate everything that is there. There are phones, for instance, that can just make calls, text messages, and a few things. There are other phones that can browse at, at a level of speed. You can connect to several things, watch videos, and the rest. Those possibilities are the glory in the phone, which is an expression of the wisdom of the company that made it. So the phone reflects the excellency of Samsung or any other LG or whatever product. Are we together now? So Christ came as a manifestation of the glory of God. The invisible God, Yahweh, found earthly expression. And everything Jesus did was a sample of what God can do. He didn't show us everything. He only showed us small and said, you continue. And he sent the spirit of glory. Are we together? To continue. So the Bible was not supposed to just end with Jesus. We are epistles. We are an unfolding of other dimensions of glory that are possible. If Jesus were still on the earth, would have written more than would have written. Probably there would have been an episode where he walked on a zinc and came down. Probably there would have been an episode where he made a dry ground to be full of water. But the Holy Spirit came and through Jesus showed us an example that we should follow in his steps. So the goal of this series is to teach us the mystery behind spiritual alignment that can make a man become a reflector of the glory of God. That all there is, all that there is to you is not just your human nature. There is more. Say amen. amen. So the glory of a thing reflects the possibilities. And um, we began to explain how that one of the keys to experiencing the glory of God is to believe that there is such a possibility. You see, brothers and sisters, God is not a man that you should lie. Are we together? Not the son of man that he should repent. If a Jimmy has 50,000 hidden in his suit pocket, is hidden and we cannot see it. If he tells me and says, I have 50,000, my attitude towards him will show whether I believe it or not. Are we together? If I tell you right now on this table, there is a phone, there is this, assuming you cannot see it, Anything you cannot see, you will have to use my person to validate your trust because you cannot see it. Are we together? So faith is that response that is entirely based on your perception of who God is. Because until there is a manifestation, you do not yet know. Once you have seen it once and again, it's no longer faith. It's called trust. Trust is based on a track record. Of a man's experience faith is based on your knowledge of his person if I tell you after service there will be free bus transport to take you assuming you are a new person who just came here it's up to you to look at me and gauge could this person be lying and then if you wish you can ask somebody who has had an experience with me the last time he spoke like this was there a boss and the person tells you yes so you believe not because you have seen a boss you believe because you think I am too big to lie to you that's what faith is predicated upon so when God says I want to reveal my glory it's up to you to first believe could God be joking is he playing games with me does he have the ability to back up his claims and this is why we have the Bible the Bible is a compendium of God's speakings versus their manifestations in the life of people. Abraham, I will make you. At the end of it, he made Abraham. He told Gideon, you're a mighty man of valor. At the end of it, Gideon became a mighty man. He told the apostles, you will receive power. At the end of it, the Bible says, then he swore by himself. 
that by these two immutable things it will be impossible for God to lie to the end that you may find a consolation that every time you see God speak you take him seriously say I believe in God say it again I believe in God hallelujah today I want you to open up your spirit because I believe with all my heart that what I'm about to share with you will truly bless you in the part two of this series we are going to be considering the anointing the glory revealed part two we are looking at the anointing that agency that can help men to reveal the possibilities in God I said to you how that the glory of a man listen please is an unveiling of the possibilities that are in that man but there is a spiritual agency that empowers men to reveal this possibility the name given to it is the anointing acts chapter 1 verse 8 mm. please be very sensitive a lot will happen tonight a lot will happen tonight this series is meant to truly bring an anointing to your life that you can hold on to it you can run with it and you can take every mountain that stands before you say amen acts chapter 1 verse 8 let's read together one to read but ye shall receive what hold on you shall receive the word power there is the word dunamis it's not the word exousia. There are many words that are translated power and authority interchangeably. Two of them that are very important is exousia and dunamis. Exousia is erroneously translated power in many places in scripture. But exousia is not power. Exousia is an authorization. The capacity to stand in the office of someone and represent him is called exousia. But this is not exousia. This talks of force. The agency that compels compliance. is called power. Dunamis. So it says you shall receive power. After, read on. That the Holy Ghost is what? Come upon you. What will that power make you do? Read on. It says and ye shall be unto me. Where? In Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. So his idea is that you become witnesses. Who is a witness? A witness is one who validates that the claim of another is true. Are we together? If we are in the court, for instance, please pay attention. I'm establishing a lot. If we are in the court of law, right, and someone stole my phone and while he was stealing it promised saw the person are we together and now we're in the court of law and i say no this guy sam stole my phone the judge will ask do you have any witness and then we will bring promise let's assume promise was snapping and in the process of snapping he snapped the man picking it that is the evidence a witness is only a witness because he has an evidence without an evidence you cannot be a witness please listen without an evidence you cannot be a witness i can be i mean a jimmy can be my brother but in this case he cannot be a witness he can support me in prayer but when we stand in court he does not have evidence everybody say evidence i'm building a case here so promise comes before the judge and then he says are you a witness to this he says yes produce your evidence then he produces a photo and that photo shows the person stealing and based on that evidence the judge so the evidence is the power that has forced the phone to return back to me the anointing is the proof that you are a witness the anointing is the evidence. When you stand in this court of life, and life places a demand on you to prove that God is with you. When your family background brings before you a mountain to prove whether God is with you. When the limitation in Nigeria stands before you 
and says you are a Christian, prove that God is with you. He says you must receive power. The authorization. You cannot be a witness. So you are going around telling people Jesus saves. And they are saying, what do you mean Jesus saves? Buddha also saves. So what is your evidence? And then the person levitates in the air. This is my evidence. Buddha empowered me. And they say, what is your evidence? And then you say, baba, baba, baba. And they say, nonsense. That's not evidence. Are we together? When someone comes up on the scene and says, I am a free mason. I worship the flying dragon of Asia. The spirit called Mammon. And this is the evidence. I have built empires by her wisdom. What is your evidence? And then you say, I'm a Christian. I'm just going to heaven. What is your evidence? Please pay attention to tonight's service. Because life will ask you that question. I will never follow a God who cannot prove himself. I'm not one of those religious people. I took time to ask God questions before I started ministry. Because the world will ask me questions. You will stand before businessmen who are idol worshippers. The spirit will give them ideas and they will move forward. And you come ranting and speaking like a fool. You will stand before arrows that fly by day. And noisome pestilences. What is your evidence? When there is a plague moving and it does not affect you, it's an evidence that there is another life in you. Please hear me. This is what I'm trying to teach you in this series. There must be an evidence. Let me tell you why we are talking too much in church. A believer was never designed to be a noisemaker. We were designed to be proof producers. Our noise is a, is a cover up. For insufficient evidence. Do you know you can be in a court and speak and the lawyer will say this evidence is not strong enough. There are few things the church is doing that unbelievers are not doing. Very few. Very few. I have studied a lot on world religions. I study a lot on religions and so many things. Christianity is not the fastest growing religion. I hope you are aware. I will tell you why. Because our strategy is wrong. They have proposed strategies that are not very effective. The religions that represent the fastest growing religions, you never see crusades. Are we together? You never see tracts. You never see people with talking, moving with Bibles all around. But there is a harvest per second, per second. God's ability. God's ability is working in me. Is working in me. God's ability. God's ability is working. It's God's ability. God's ability. Lay your hands on your head in one minute and pray and say, Lord, there must be an evidence. An evidence. I'm tired of bringing mockery to your name. And misrepresenting you. Go ahead and pray. Shakata baba baba. Reketeketeleba. He shall receive power. Power. Not stories. Power. Not stories. Power. Sheketeketelebo kosoba. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Fire is burning in this place, I tell you. Acts 
chapter 10 verse 38 please help us media i came to challenge you the way we are doing church and christianity we are about to disappoint god we need evidences not evidences just from preachers are we together i will never follow a god who cannot prove himself i'm not one of those people they like they say, just believe don't worry in his time no way no way no way before gideon accepted the assignment he asked questions before mary accepted she, she said how shall these things be because according to my knowledge a man and a woman will produce pregnancy but he said the power of the highest in other words there is another root in the spirit you have known that it's only a man and a woman you have known that you only wait for five years to get a job but there is another root the power of the highest shall overshadow you see i bring you another way there is not only one way of doing things the world has created their way but god has his way how God anointed Jesus let me tell you what that means look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who was anointed this way Jesus he was not anointed three days to the cross he would have had 33 years of wasted experience and three days of impact he was anointed before how many of us have been taught to start moving without empowerment he says as a result of that who went about doing what doing good an example of the good he did was to heal all that were oppressed of the devil that was not the only good he did he multiplied bread doing good by the anointing he forced money inside the mouth of a fish doing good by the anointing he multiplied bread and fish by the anointing he calmed the storm by the anointing he vindicated a woman who was on her way to death by the anointing he raised the dead by the anointing and the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all that they all day that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him divine presence bringing the anointing in the life of Jesus and Jesus moved around doing good you are going around trying to do good willing to do good meaning to do good but good is not coming because good is not just a desire there is an empowerment men are empowered to do good I want to help the poor there is an anointing that helps you to do good write this down what is the anointing please participate and listen patiently and carefully those outside in any of the overflows just pay attention you may be standing but listen number one the anointing is God's seal of authorization upon you to represent him. The anointing is God's seal of authorization upon a man, upon any man, not a preacher. God's seal of authorization upon you to represent him. Every military man has a uniform. The uniform is a seal of authorization. When the military man is in mufti, he has no right to do certain things. But when he wears his uniform, his uniform and his badge is his seal of authorization. Are we together? Mm. Paul said, Paul, I, Paul, a man approved of God with miracles, signs and diverse manifestations. Approved of God. That is the evidence of my apostleship. Hallelujah. So number one, God's seal of authorization upon a man to represent him. Number two, the anointing 
is God's capacity to produce change and compel compliance. Write it down. Underline compel. Because we live in a stubborn world that will not change by desire. It takes power to change things. It takes power to change genotype from SS to AA. It takes power to change a cancerous cell to a healthy cell. It takes power to raise the dead. It takes power to prosper. Hallelujah. Are we together? It takes power to prosper. We all want to prosper, but we neglect the place of power. Many people bow to gods, bow to spirits, receive power from them. They sacrifice children, turn them upside down and drain their blood. And the man takes his pen upon that blood and goes to sign a proposal. And whenever you see it, you must approve it. That's power. And yet many believers just move around and they ask you, why should you get this proposal? You say, I'm sincere. Welcome to the world where only mantles speak. Your long story and English will not do you much. When Moses went to Pharaoh, he said, Pharaoh, this is what the Lord said. Pharaoh said, nonsense. He said, my rod, continue the conversation. I don't have time for this rubbish. Janus and Jembers brought their own rod. When he swallowed it, Moses said, take note of this, I'm coming back. And he left. After nine plagues, Pharaoh was still hardened. Then the Bible says, yet one more plague will I bring upon Pharaoh and the nation of Israel. He says, afterwards, he shall let you go. And he didn't let them go. The Bible says, they were driven to go out. They didn't wait for their dough to rise to make chinchin. They were in a hurry. They made it anyhow because a man was tired. May you anoint in weary darkness to let you go. I'm not motivating you. There is an unction a man can carry. No matter how mad a man is, he will not enter fire by mistake. Give him two minutes. That madness will rearrange itself until it comes out. Because fire was not designed to fear. The Bible says he maketh his angels winds, numa, spirits, and his ministers flames of fire. There is power. In the name of Jesus There is power In the name of Jesus There is power In the name of Jesus Hallelujah Please look up Someone came to me and said, every night, there's a spirit that comes to him and oppresses him. Just when things are about to happen, a stranger steps into his room. And I said, it's because that stranger has not seen power. The Bible says, no man can enter a man's house and spoil him. What will you first do? Discuss? Suggest? Bind the strong man, he says. And then you spoil his goods. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned. I prophesy to you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto Sing it one more time. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Have you seen someone steal a laptop because he saw a room empty and you steal the laptop and run away with it? Are we together? Run away with the laptop because you are more powerful than the person. Then what does the owner do? He goes to the police station and carries a policeman. Are we together? They hold guns and they enter a van. Then they come and meet the owner after two weeks. And say we are going to kill you. Power above his power. What does he do? 
he shows you the laptop is still lying down there quietly and he carries it the bible says, when you catch a thief if he gives you back what he has stolen he has still cheated you he will restore tenfold that profit must be added in the realm of the spirit when you catch a thief he doesn't pay back what he has stolen because time would have gone are we together if the breakthrough had come in 2005 by now you would have helped many people so now that it did not come i'm not just going to receive it like that if you receive it you did it was not restoration it was just progress continued The capacity to produce change and compel compliance. If Buhari announces right now and says tomorrow is public holiday, assuming tomorrow were a working day, immediately he speaks. All the armed forces and the military people and paramilitary, he is using authority, not power. What he's using is exousia his office as a president to speak but dunamis are the soldiers so they move on the street with cane guns tear gas and uh, black maria what are they doing compelling compliance if they find you roaming around still trying to sell drugs in your pharmacy they ask you did you not hear what the president said and then you, they hop you into the black maria and penalize you god makes the statement the earth is the Lord's. He's waiting for you to create that compliance. Are we together now? Mm. Number three, we're still defining the anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing, write it down, is the empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. The empowerment. The capacity to manifest the possibilities in God. The anointing is the empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. It's not enough to chorus and say God is love. It's not enough to chorus and say God is mighty. Are we together now? Your life must produce the evidence. Number four, the last definition. What is the anointing? The anointing is the agency to reveal the love and the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. The agency to reveal the love and the sovereignty of Jesus. There are two things God is obsessed that they be revealed on the earth. Number one is his love. Number two is his sovereignty. His might as the sovereign ruler. That's where the word Lord comes from. There is a desire in God to see his love find expression in the earth. There is a desire in God to see his sovereignty find expression. Hallelujah. There are two dimensions to the anointing. Please just write this quickly. That's not really where we are dwelling. We preach many messages on the anointing. But just for us to know. There are two dimensions of the anointing. Broadly speaking. Number one. There is the personal anointing that empowers a man to grow and be like Jesus. There is a personal anointing that empowers a man to grow spiritually and be like Jesus. People like Kenneth E. Hagin call it the anointing within. The personal anointing that is for your spiritual growth to, to help you grow to the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ it is the anointing that teaches you all things it is the unction from the Holy One that empowers you right the grace of God has appeared unto all men teaching us to say no there is the personal anointing to grow and represent Christ first John 2 20 media please first John 2 20 that's the first dimension of the anointing Every believer in Christ is entitled to that dimension of the anointing. Even that dimension itself can grow. 
everyone is entitled read after me please one to read it says but ye have an unction from the holy one and as a result you know all things you have an unction whether you are a preacher whatever you, if you are in christ you are entitled to this dimension of the anointing hallelujah the second dimension of the anointing and trust me i know what i'm saying the second dimension of the anointing is the anointing that is given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment the second dimension of the anointing is the anointing given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment that is the anointing of your call the anointing of your destiny the anointing of your destiny is not the same as the anointing of your personal spiritual growth. It's the anointing that backs you up to make sure you fulfill purpose. The anointing that is given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment. Write this down. It is the anointing that reveals your destiny. It is the anointing that empowers you to fulfill your assignment on earth. That one comes with discovering your call. That one comes with discovering your place in life and destiny. It doesn't come just because you are born again. Are we together? If God calls you into ministry, there is an anointing that follows you. If God calls you into business, there is an anointing that follows you. The moment you assume that position of being an ambassador, you are ready to take one of the seven mountains that control humans. One of the seven mountains, the mountains of religion, the mountains of government, the mountains of, of, of arts and entertainment, the mountain of media, the mountain of education, the mountain of family, and the mountain of finance. Any one of those mountains God sends you, there is an anointing. Are we together? Because there are rulers of darkness. The Bible tells us, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, he says, but against what? Principalities. Against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places these are rankings and all these spirits are strategically stationed on this mountain listen to my message give me this mountain there i teach on the spiritual dimension of success success is not just by degrees success is not just by intelligence success is not just by being scientific there is a spirituality because there are giants on every mountain but Caleb said give me this mountain hallelujah so there is an anointing that comes with your call there is an anointing that comes with your assignment when God empowers you he puts an anointing upon your life an anointing upon the ministry he has committed to you are we together there is an anointing upon Benny Hinn that produces that result. Now, let me tell you something about this second dimension of the anointing. Listen. This second dimension of the anointing is not operational anytime. I want you to understand this. Are we together? There is a timing and there are seasons of its operation. This anointing for your assignment is not operational anytime. There are three laws that govern its operation. One, a demand from those who desire to be recipients of it. It responds to faith. It responds to desire. Are we together? The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, how that when he was passing the gates, beautiful, the man was begging for arms. And Peter told him, look on us. And he looked at them, expecting to receive. And he says, silver and gold. That expectation provoked the anointing. Blind Bartimaeus cried, Thou son of David, he provoked the anointing. That is the anointing people like Kenneth E. Hagen would call the anointing upon. It doesn't come all the time. Anybody that tells you it comes all the time is a liar and doesn't understand anything about the anointing. If it's operational in you all the time, it will kill you. You do not have the physical capacity. Your body does not have that stamina 
have you finished preaching and you went back and felt tired it lifted that's what jesus meant by virtue has gone out of me when virtue leaves you prophets in ancient times when the anointing landed upon them for their experience when it lifted some of them were sick for days they had to eat herbs to recover from the stream are we together this anointing is activated at the point of delivery at the point where you have to do that which you were born to do so you can be sleeping in your house the moment there is a demand and it is with respect to your assignment the anointing is like a lion within you are we together that's the reason why you can see a man of God you may not even be able to touch him when he's on stage after the meeting you are hugging him slapping him because something has lifted but if by any mistake you're hugging you apply faith to it it will return that's what makes people just they are laughing and the next thing the power of God because their hunger did not die with the service are we together so many people were touching Jesus and a woman came he said if I may but touch the hem of his garment Jesus was not even aware but it was automatic the moment there was a demand that anointing that messianic anointing that will fulfill Isaiah 61 to bind up the brokenhearted the anointing that is given on account of your assignment two scriptures to help us Isaiah 61 please will not read it um, will not project it just write it Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 4 the spirit of the Lord is upon me upon me because he gave me an assignment that requires an authorization so because of that the spirit of the Lord is upon me and with that spirit came an anointing to preach glad tidings to bind up the brokenhearted right to set the captives free to open up the doors of prison to declare the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all day that morning Zion to give them beauty for ashes a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified the anointing came for that reason Jesus reiterated it again in Luke chapter 4 when you read from verse 14 to 18 the Bible says they brought to him right that which was written by Isaiah the prophet and then he opened it and he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me and at the end of it he said this day is this scripture fulfilled i have come as a fulfillment of this then he began to do it in one of the synoptic gospels there and then he told a man with a withered hand stretch forth your hand as a proof that i have come What is the purpose of the anointing? I've said it to us, but we must. The purpose is, is encapsulated in the definition. But the purpose of the anointing. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. Shaba kapara kusupa talabaya. Isaiah 10, 27. I'd like us to read it together. It's projected. One to read shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed why listen please look up there are yokes there are burdens there are afflictions upon the lives and the destinies of men upon the families of men robbing men of their dignity mocking God's statement that he made man like him and it takes the anointing to correct that error are we together the anointing comes to lift burdens the anointing comes to break yokes the anointing comes to open up prison doors to them that are bound. Number two, Psalm 66 verse 3. Psalm 66 verse 3.
Let's read it, please. Just write it and look up and let's read. One, two, read. Say unto God. Uh huh. Read on. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. Not through the greatness of grammar, not through English and negotiation. On the strength of the excellency of your power. Listen, let me tell you something. You are liable for oppression the moment you find yourself here. Unfortunately, it is not given to you to choose to arrive here. Are we together? The moment you are born, there are children who from birth, they are already born with all kinds of sicknesses. Are we together? They never chose it. It's the reality. Listen, let me tell you. The moment you cross the second heavens, the domain of evil can find expression. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, the Bible says. But from the second heavens, demonic activities are authorized to find expression. Down till under the earth. That's what happens to children. The moment, it's not a man and a woman that produces children. They just create the body for the child to come. But the moment that child arrives, right from the interface of the second heavens, war begins over the destiny of the child. It's left for the father and the mother to be spiritual enough to secure the destiny of the child or careless enough to allow anything happen. Are we together? Yeah. That is why you hear that children are initiated from the womb. How can you initiate a child whose faculty of reasoning is not there? Are we together? Is it not in your Bible that John was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb? How did he pray in tongues? How did he manifest that? Hallelujah. I want to show you four keys to accessing the anointing. This, this is the place where I want us to be sensitive now. Because you are not only going to hear, you are going to receive. Hallelujah. Please believe me. You are not going to hear alone. You are going to receive. I enter the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. I enter the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. Holy Spirit. We wait on you, Holy Spirit. I wait on you, Holy Spirit. I wait on you for fire. Kaba kaba ya, for fire. Lord, we wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. You can make tonight your night of encounter listen there was a time in my life the anointing was not upon me 
I was not born with it. Are we together? A time can come and tonight can be that time. If you believe. But if you are careless, Elijah said, if you can see me, was he blind? It's a spiritual language. There is a measure of sensitivity it takes to truly grab the anointing. It's not about falling down. Look at me. It's not about falling down. It's about your spirit. Station. You are not just hearing. You are seeing what the Lord is saying. Let me tell you something. The difference between you and the next level of your life is the anointing. There is nothing that will cover for the absence of the anointing. I know it. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you were mighty on your throne. Just follow me, follow me. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you were mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, God, you were mighty on the throne. Yeah, yeah, you're mighty in this place. Shalom, shalom, my father, shalom, shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom. Jehovah, Habashakatabayada. Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Yeah. sensitive what are the keys that have turned ordinary men to wonders workers of miracles what can a man do what is the secret that can open up this fountain in the spirit for no man is born with this thing hear me there is a key there are keys no man is born with unction Jesus himself. What can make a man of God so powerful that your words can create an effect in the life of men? You are speaking from one end and someone outside is shaking like a leaf. What is the key? Please hear me. This is an office. I'm not speaking to you as a man. I can speak to you as a man who has researched this truth. But I speak to you as a custodian of the mystery of this thing. I may not show you, I may not boast that I know business principles. I may not boast that I know on leadership. But I can teach you the mysteries of the presence of God. For it is an office. It was given to me by Jesus Christ. The angels bow before him. You're beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. The heavens are not the door. 
The angels bow before you. You're beautiful. Yeah. You're beautiful. Just follow me tonight. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. Heaven and earth adore you. The angels bow before you. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Oh. understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will walk in a new dimension believe me understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ministry will change like day and night understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will become like a God upon the earth understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ranking will change instantly in the spirit understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your life will become a wonder it's not by quoting scripture it's a realm you can stand in number one the first key to accessing the anointing is salvation don't trivialize it write it and take it as serious as anything there are many people in church who are not born again but they want power there are many pastors on the altar who are not born again but they want power you can fast as an unbeliever you will never find power you can be the PA of a man of God and not be born again please hear me that they ordained you does not mean you are born again are you hearing what I'm saying ah, I tell you I sense fire in this place that you were ordained they poured oil on you does not mean that you are born again let me tell you we can do what we know to do on earth but it depends on whether God approves of it or not ah, 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 ah. That's what I'm hearing in the spirit. John chapter 1 verse 12 we have to hurry up because God will soon sit in this place the weight of his glory but as many as received him meaning not everybody will receive him as many as received him to them gave he what power the power is for those who receive him not those who are near him not those who go to where he is proximity to God is not salvation let me tell you the truth there are so many people who need to examine their born again I am telling you this there are many people who are not born again 
are we together and I don't mean just by religious activities no an encounter with Jesus Christ no there are people who are not born again you will say this and many people will argue with you but the way the early church were born again when they were born again fire fell on them salvation the power to become is for those who receive for those who receive him they are the type God will back God does not back everybody just because Jesus died for everybody does not mean you just speak and things happen you know it's and, and please if you're a pastor here hear me aside from the impartation you receive tonight open your eyes don't think it's just by wearing suit and holding a mic Oh, the power of God is here. All these things we keep doing, we fool ourselves. Nothing will cover for the absence of an encounter. Not suit, not English, not Greek and Hebrew. There must be a track record in the secret place. He said, that which I tell you in the secret, declare thou on the mountaintop. You don't just come and stand and because they gave you a mic, you expect things to happen. No, sir. Human beings are not robots. Are we together? Human beings are not idiots. Do you know the power it takes to lift a man off his seat? I don't mean physically alone. Track record. Salvation. Number two. The second key. Give us 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. The second key. Pay attention. To a rich, heavy deposit of the anointing upon your life that is undeniable is addiction and passion for God and his kingdom addiction passion I'll give you more than a song for a song in itself is that what you have required you search much deeper within to the way things are You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus There is no power for part-time Christianity there is no power for part-time addiction there is no power for part-time ministry so many pastors are part-time ministers by part-time I don't mean that you are doing another thing part-time with God and part-time with ambition looking for relevance joining all kinds of stupid associations to quickly rise the ladder of ministry no it is God that lifts men please hear me your addiction for God must supersede your addiction for money must supersede your addiction for church your addiction for Versace and Boss and Gucci your addiction for cars and houses if you want God's power except if you want to go and see a herbalist but if you want the power that comes from heaven, it must match your level of addiction. You will never have more power beyond your addiction. No. Your addiction defines the flow of the anointing. How addicted are you to God as a person? Two, how addicted are you to his kingdom, to seeing his kingdom come? Don't say I'm addicted. It shows in your giving. It shows in your time. It shows in your service in the house of God. Don't tell me you are addicted to God when you can be comfortable and come and sit in a ministry for months and years and you are not part of building that house. You are not addicted. No. It says as the deer pants after the water brooks, so my soul pants after you. It was the psalmist that said this. He says... Oh Lord, you are my God. He said, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Right? To see your power and your glory. 
let me tell you something many Christians in our generation we love God we are born again but we are too ashamed of our addiction addiction the same way have you seen someone addicted to uh, what they call this thing Indian hemp the person will not mind coming to meet a small child and say sir please give me 10 naira. I have not eaten he's lying so obviously but because he cannot help it if you can still manage your passion for God you don't love him enough Oh, let's let's be real let's let's not act like fools you are joking you want power I'm telling you you must fall in love with God with all your heart not fall in love with the healing anointing many of us are I you know I pray for people and most times when people come that I pray for them so that they will receive double portion or triple portion or whatever I know they don't love God they even love me more than God I see it in their expression that they only love me because we have taught that you should honor a man you know that they love me more than God you know they love that anointing more than God anything above God even if he gave you is an idol whatever it is please hear me do you love God more than your beauty do you love God more than power do you love God more than koinonia do you love God more than Joshua Selman that's addiction do you love God more than marriage do you love God more than more than whatever it's all these carnal things that take our time? Please fall in love with God in a way that nothing in time. People get jobs. When they lose jobs, they backslide. What a shame to your passion for God. You are in a relationship. Someone says, I will marry you. All of a sudden, he says, I'm not doing, and you leave God. God, I'm angry. Jesus told the disciples, he said, will you also go? And they said, to whom shall we go? Where, where are we going? Leaving you is no longer an option. If you never bless me, I still, I mean, I still owe you my love forever. Please, let me tell you something. If you want power from God, stop seeking God just because of things. Stop seeking God just because of things. Oh Lord, I want your time. I want your hand and we bend God's hand with fasting and prayer no how many pastors want to see God glorified in their assemblies very little I can tell you this many pastors fast some of you are like that probably you came from somewhere you are sitting boiling waiting for the time of impartation and God is saying calm down not so so that you will not go back disappointed God is not a herbalist there is a protocol to true spiritual power addiction addiction outspoken Christianity outspoken Christianity not the type you off your ringtone because you are in a place that 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 will fall your hand if God falls your hand you are falling I tell you I rather be a doorkeeper the psalmist said I will trade my palace and its honor to serve God. Forever you will be. Forever you will be. The lamb upon the throne. The lamb upon the throne. And I gladly bow my knee. To worship you alone. MOG. It's time to seek God more than ministry. Your ministry is distracting you and killing you from God. You have carried ministry and put on your head like a luggage that came from demons. And you, you will afford for your secret place to suffer so that you will fulfill a ministerial schedule. I can cancel any ministration for my secret place. You know, we think being busy is ministry. Oh, today I'm in Hawaii. Tomorrow I'm in Dubai. Next tomorrow I'm in South Africa. Next tomorrow I'm in UK. Then I'm in Accra Ibom. I'm in London. And we think because we are hopping up and down, we are doing ministry. Let me tell you, you may be doing all these things, but before God, you are not doing anything. Your heart is more important than your voice to God. 
don't think because you are always talking it means God is hearing you no your heart number three let's hurry up I want us to pray what is the third key the baptism of the Holy Ghost the third key to fire in your life is the baptism of the Holy Ghost slash prayers so you write it slash prayers that the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 the baptism of the Holy Spirit backed up by the ability to pray in tongues fluent tongues now there's no time for me to go into this discussion please don't stop Mike don't stop you see this concept of prayer and the concept of the baptism of the Holy Spirit has been hijacked by Satan please listen to me it is not a denominational perspective it has nothing to do with Pentecostalism and charismatism I was never filled with the Holy Ghost in any church there is no pastor no denomination that can claim that it was because I was in the assembly no God did that for me specifically so that I will be able to communicate these truths to people the devil has cheated us and I know many of us is in fear so that we don't get into witchcraft and diabolism I understand and I respect your passion but listen to me if you want power in this kingdom that endowment with power that endowment with power ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 says now when the day of Pentecost were fully come he said they were gathered together in one accord verse 2 says suddenly suddenly not gradually the baptism does not happen gradually suddenly are we together suddenly they had a sound that sound as of a mighty rushing wind and the Bible says it came and filled the room and then the Bible says they saw what looked like cloven tongues as of fire and it rested on each each one of them not some they're not as shared each one of them then the Bible says then they began to speak with tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance they were 120 in the upper room it was such an experience that all the people around that place came and saw the mighty things they were doing and they said these men were drunk with new wine they linked that experience with wine the same way a man drinks beer one bottle two bottles ten bottles at the eleventh one is not himself again another influence takes him so when they saw the men he said you are behaving like those who have taken this thing are we together now and then in Acts chapter 3 still well Acts chapter 2 when Peter finished preaching to them the Bible says they were caught to the heart and this is what they said men and brethren what shall we do and then he says repent for the remission of your sins and then he says you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children and as many as are far off as many as the Lord will call that included us are we together yeah in Acts chapter 19 from verse 1 to 4 is the most classic explanation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit Paul having passed through the upper coast the Bible says he came and he found certain disciples disciples they were already born again give us Acts please 19 1 to 4 they had passed through the upper coast the Bible says Paul came and found certain disciples are we together and then he asked them a question verse 2 he says have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe meaning it's not the same experience has been born again initiated by the same spirit but there are two separate experiences have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed 
and then they replied him they said we have not even heard if there be any holy ghost and paul was surprised and then he says unto what then were you baptized he was asking them a question and they said the baptism of john then Paul began to explain to them he said the baptism of John was a baptism of repentance that they should believe on the one who was to come that means it was Jesus Christ and afterwards Paul said the, the Bible says they were now baptized to the name of Jesus Christ and then Paul laid his hands upon them and then the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues right there were 12 in number have you received the Holy Ghost have you received that empowerment since you believed when you read let's read from 18 18 the last five verses if you can give it to us right the bible talks about a very intelligent man hallelujah um no not 19 verse 18 18 acts 18 acts 18 please the last four verses acts 18 are you with us acts 18 okay let's just let's just turn there so we don't waste time okay now the bible says give us from verse 24 let's start from 24 listen to this story a certain jew named who apollos and the Bible says Apollos was born at Alexandria. He said he was a man who was mighty in scriptures. He was eloquent. He was an orator. Are we together? And then the Bible says he came to Ephesus. Ephesus is not the place you come and preach nonsense. It's where Paul got his revelation of the highest church truth. There was a goddess called Diana in Ephesus. She was the goddess that controlled that center of economy. So you had to be sound and mighty in scriptures. Now Apollos came. Next verse. 25. He said the man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And was what? Fervent in spirit. Zealous. The Bible says. And he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. But he had a limitation. What was his limitation? Knowing only the baptism of John. He was born again and he knew repentance. Like many people in churches, like many pastors, they are zealous, they love God, but the scope of their understanding of God is the baptism of John. Let's see what happened. One day, he went to a crusade to impress everybody as usual. He says, and he began to speak in the synagogue and then there were two strange men in that synagogue. There were men who were powerful people of the spirit called Aquila and Priscilla they said when they had him and they they took him with them they said we see zeal in you but you are limited there is a theology that has not been taught to you we want to upgrade your scope of the understanding of God the Bible says they took him hear me and then they says they expounded to him the way of God more what perfectly let's see what he did as a result next verse and when he was disposed and passed to Achaia the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him the Bible says who when he was come he helped them much which believed through grace let's see what he did next verse for he mightily convinced the Jews now he had an evidence he didn't just speak to them in the former verses he was eloquent sorry but now he could convince them that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ this was not just just again there was an evidence there was an empowerment listen you must be tired of explanations oh God is this God is that one miracle can answer a thousand questions there is no amount of message you want to preach that will impress men again. The internet is full of messages. There are all kinds of men of God with perspectives. All across Africa, all across the world, messages are now free. What the world needs is a demonstration of power. Romans chapter 8, please. Verse 19.
Romans chapter 8 For the earnest expectation of the creator waited for the manifestation not the explanation not the discussion Let's see it in the New Living Translation or the Message Bible I'm looking for the version that says creation is waiting for the sons to reveal who they truly are There is a version like that 8 verse 19 not 20 8 verse 19 8 verse 19 uh, thank you NLT for creation is what eagerly waiting for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are because the Bible says it does not yet appear they are still looking at us and they think we are like them but there is an activity happening in us the bible says behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of god are we together the bible says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear what we shall be like we are still in the formation there is still a building christ is still being formed in us like paul prayed to the church he said my little children of whom i travel until christ be formed for when he's done let me tell you he will produce a wonder in our lives first corinthians 2 verse 7 quickly and then we'll go to the last key and we'll pray first corinthians 2 verse 7 he says talking about the mystery of this language of the spirit he said no please give it to us um okay no problem no problem let's just take it there it says no the wisdom we speak it doesn't make sense but the bible calls it the hidden wisdom god put it like that so that only humble people can walk in it if you are not humble enough to receive that hidden wisdom the bible says we speak the wisdom we speak of is what the mystery everybody say mystery the same way there is a traditional festival and you see people going around fire and making enchantments and putting fire on their body have you seen that happen and it doesn't burn them they put the fire in their mouth and bring it out they carry knife and put it in their mouth and it enters and brings it out because they are operating on a mystery the bible says to the believer there is a mystery that has been given you It says the mystery of God his plan that was he previously hidden what was it he said even though he made it for our ultimate glory so one secret to your entering the glory is this mystery called tongues when a man locks up himself and begins to pray people say you are just talking nonsense no problem it's the same way you talk nonsense and call it laughter <laughs> and nobody laughs at you it's intelligent in fact people accuse you for not laughing who taught you how to laugh the same way your cry as sarcastic as it looks it compels compassion tongues is also like that don't let anybody tell you you are taught to pray in tongues when you slap a baby Shade, when you gave birth to your child and they slapped the child and the child started crying who taught the child that they cry with the mouth not the eyes it was programmed there listen I want you to know that the believer is supernatural when you remove the supernatural we are just herbalists leaders or, and followers of a religion don't remove the supernatural dimension hallelujah made for our glory any man who does not pray cannot reveal the glory of God there is a relationship between prayer and power Acts 1 verse 8 you shall receive power Acts 2 verse 1 to 4 they receive tongues Jesus didn't say you will receive tongues he said you receive power but in Acts chapter 2 they receive tongues meaning there is a system that tongues uses to translate and produce power in a man it was Paul himself that said I thank my God 
I pray in tongues more than you. Hallelujah. Luke 18 verse 1. He spake a parable unto them to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 17. Pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night. You'll be an irresponsible person. It means pray consistently. The Bible says, and the fire upon the altar, it shall never go down day or night. Let me tell you something. Whatever attacks your prayer life has really destroyed your life. It's cheaper for your finances to be attacked than for your prayer life. It's cheaper, as bad as it is, for your health to be attacked than your prayer life. And let me tell you how Satan attacks you. He makes you to resent everybody that can help you. You fight and quarrel them and push them. When you are alone, then he attacks you. Satan never attacks you until he creates an occasion through bitterness, through anger, through fault finding. So everybody that can help you and intercede for you, he cuts you away from them and then he leaves you alone. Solitude is a sign that darkness is close to you. Listen, listen. Excessive solitude. I'm not talking of just retreating to pray. When there is a desire in you to not hear people, to not listen, you are in a world of your own. It's a sign that darkness is close to you. It's a strategy for your destruction. The last key to receiving unction to reveal the glory is called impartation. The mystery of impartation. Transference of grace. Transference of unction. Transference of power. Numbers chapter 27. We'll just look at one example so that we pray. Let's see what transpired between Moses and Joshua. A classic sign of biblical impartation. Numbers 27. Verse 18 to 23. Numbers chapter 27. Please write this scripture down and study it with all your heart. This was God instructing Moses to prepare Joshua for ministry. Are we together? Are you ready? Let's read. One to read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and do what? Lay your hands upon him. That's what should happen. Next verse. And set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight. Are we together? And he says, And thou shalt put some of thine honor. Can you show me where honor is in a man? God said, Don't just through impartation transfer your spirit, transfer your honor. I told you honor is not something you fight for. It's a mantle. That all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. There is a mantle that makes men loyal to a grace. It's not by shouting and saying obey me. There is a mantle. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest who shall speak counsel for him and so on and so forth and so on and so forth now let's see what happened Deuteronomy chapter 3 chapter 34 verse 9 just one scripture Deuteronomy 34 is still a continuation of this story Deuteronomy 34 verse 9 let's read together one two read uh huh was full of the spirit of wisdom. Why? For Moses had what? Laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him. Listen. You know why people don't listen to you? Because you are trying to do ministry using seniority. You are trying to do ministry saying, don't disrespect me. There is an unction that compels loyalty. Men are not loyal to a man just because he can preach. They will clap for you. When you see a ministry that can follow a man unto death, brothers and sisters, there is a mystery upon his head. 
I can tell you Koinonia has that mystery. Hmm. You see, Ba, there are secrets in this kingdom. There are secrets in this kingdom. The one you can find is the one you will live by. The one you do not know is the one that will chain you forever. God said, I want to honor Joshua, but I will not ignore a vessel who is already carrying it. He said, Moses, it is within your power to put your spirit and your honor upon him. Listen, you can carry a man's grace and the virtue of God upon his life and reap. You can trace an anointing and know where it came from. Are we together? You can see a man stand on stage and know that this came from Benihin. This one. You can see this prayer fire and know this one came from Duncan Williams. This one did not just come from this. You can see a prosperity mantle and trace it. Anointings are like address. They can show you where they came from. I'm a product of many anointings. The glory revealed through the anointing. The anointing giving you capacity to produce an evidence. An evidence. An evidence. There are different kinds of anointings. There is the power to prosper. Shout it. Say the power to prosper. I want you to shout it like you mean it. Say the power to prosper. The power to prosper. This is what many people need to pray for. I'm not against business ideas. I teach you principles. There's financial dominion. But I can tell you there is such a thing as the power to prosper. If you don't have it, I've seen people who have all kinds of business ideas. But the power to prosper is not a business idea. The power to prosper is a grace that compels creation to respond to you in a certain way. Jesus had it. He said, go and you will see a donkey, a colt. No man had written on it. Bring it. The owner could not say no. What kind of grace is that? That's the grace that will make you tell somebody, we need speakers for our program. And he said, take it. That's the grace that will make somebody say, take my car and be using it for this crusade. There is such a grace. Let me tell you something. How you will know the power to prosper is not in your life is that you pay for everything if you pay for everything the power to prosper is not it's not about being a millionaire the power to prosper is not about being a millionaire it's about the supernatural speaking in your life men are rising to help you when there is trouble listen if you are in trouble and there is no man who can arise to help you I'm telling you, the power to prosper is not the power for finances. We have reduced it to money. Every time preachers preach, they, they mean the power to give you dollars. Please, don't insult God. Money was an idea. By the time that scripture was written, there was no naira, there was no dollar. It's the power that moves you forward. Even if it must raise help us from anywhere. I want you to believe this by the grace of God this is how this ministry came the power to prosper listen please I don't know how I don't want you to think money money is part of it if you think money you will be you will think I am saying the power to get money to buy watch and suit that's nonsense that's not what I'm talking about to prosper means to do well to prosper means by all means you will excel. Are we together? The, pros the power to prosper is the power that moves men to support your interest at the expense of their own interest. When you see a man, a man who can leave his own assignment and pursue another man's assignment, there is power to prosper there. That's what God wanted to give us. But pastors have told us the power to prosper is the power to buy a nice shoe. And you sit down and pray for hours. You don't need to be born again to buy a nice shoe. You just need to offer value and it will come. 
this is this is not about getting money for sure the power that causes men to move you forward you can have money but do you have helpers you can have money but do you have endorsers you can have money but do you have men that can lift your hand this is the power to prosper say I need the power to prosper the key to suffering in a Christian's life is to ignore the power to prosper believe me you may get a job very soon you will find out that money does not do everything money is not everything money is very important don't get me wrong but money is not everything there are people today who are in houses that they are not paying the rent that's the power to prosper you can have 500,000 to rent a duplex you can have 2.5 million to rent a duplex that's not necessarily the power to prosper that's good financial acumen good financial intelligence and that's commendable but the power to prosper is that you can leave your house with nothing and return back with miracles because there are men stationed anywhere whether you forget your money or not it doesn't make any difference because there is an unction that sends helpers as at when due that's the power to prosper and if our God is for us then who can never stop us and if our God is for us then what can prosper is the ministry of men in your life the ministry of men in your life help us everywhere please listen it's not just intelligence to produce result by yourself this body is limited there is too much you can do there is only so much you can do with this body are we together yes see let me tell you something if the only job of the power to prosper is to give you money then Bill Gates can mock the church are we together you know we think all there is to the power to prosper is money I don't insult any man of God we have preached this thing but I'm saying we have limited the power to prosper to money so those who don't like money just say no 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 I don't like it to reject the power to prosper is like to cut two of your legs in the spirit how else will you move are we together the bible says david was in the cave of adulam by himself all of a sudden 400 men that's the power to prosper they came to him in the cave and they said be a leader of the, over us we will hear you and we will walk with you in ancient times you were not rich if you just had money they can come and beat you and kill you and remove your head and carry the gold you were rich if you had people people it was a battle of territory and loyalty but in our generation now you can be a, a greedy person that just looted from the national treasury and carry money and buy suit and come and deceive us we know what the power to prosper is there are people who are rich but they do not have it that's why they don't give god the glory when you suffer for everything you can't give god the glory are we together you suffer to get a job you suffer to keep it you suffer to buy a car you suffer to change another one you suffer to get your wife pregnant suffering all around how can you give God the glory but when you sit down and watch God God will say son I want to embarrass you stand still you have done something that has touched me stand still hallelujah one time we're coming back from Ekiti and when we're coming back from Ekiti I don't share too much of these testimonies but someone just did a heavy transfer into the ministry's account honestly I don't even know the person I had to ask the protocol people do you know this person help us everywhere not just cash not just kind someone will come and meet you and say there is a property somewhere i could not sleep the lord said i should bless you power to prosper someone says from today until december i will fuel the generator of koinonia don't even tell apostle 
that's the power to prosper they make your journey easy by making you lighter you can have the money but you won't sleep because of it let me tell you one of the graces I trust God to release tonight is the power to prosper I'm explaining it to you so that you will believe if it's not in your life you are going to cry this night because some of us it, once you are stranded you are dead there no helper you call and everybody ends your call it's not about hustling it's about Ebenezer the helper of Zion are we together If you don't believe what I'm teaching you, I don't know how else to explain it to you. Are we together? There are so many people in Koinonia here preparing for marriage. The economy of Nigeria has become so fierce. If you don't have the power to prosper, you will suffer. You can get a job after laboring for years in the university. You get a job and someone just says, where are you from? And you say, I'm Yoruba. He says, you are not Hausa. Leave the job. It just brings in sentiments to cancel your five, six, seven years of labor. That's the world we live in now. Are we together? Are you my brother? Are you a Christian or otherwise? Are you this? Are you from the same village? Not what do you have to give? In that world of wickedness, you want to move forward? You want to plant a church. I was not born in Zaria. I'm not from Kaduna State. You don't go to another man's state and do ministry if you don't have the power to prosper. There is loyalty that comes with territory. Are we together? That's why Jesus told the people, start from Jerusalem. But when you go to a foreign territory, brothers and sisters, you need the power to prosper. That's what our fathers have used. And they have opened branches of their ministries in UK, in France. Huh? someone speaks Yoruba and another person interprets in French and the people never leave there is a pastor writing things in France and people would rather stay there and redeemed MFM is there moving as if the devil does not exist you will find places where I was, I was dedicating a woman's child um, she used to be in Zaria but now she's in France she was in Holland God used us, you know, and then there was a miracle for her. After many years, she had a child and she went to different churches. The Presbyterian churches there were not dedicating children. They didn't collect tithes and they were not dedicating children because the government was sanctioning. And I told her, I said, uh -uh, you mean there's no church around? And she said, the only living church in this area is redeemed. I said, redeemed again. Redeemed again. How did you get there now? And the pastor there is a Yoruba person. Come on now. Power to prosper. You enter a land and become indomitable. A firm grasp of territories. Not intimidated by any government. They will come and go. The mystery keeps you there. Now they are downsizing workers. Between now and December, a lot will happen. I've told us, I told us at 1st of January, this thing will not go well in terms of the economy. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I told us there is a mystery of exemption. That's why God said this is a year of multiplied grace and influence. Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3. It says Gentiles shall come. Hallelujah. If you are looking for a better Nigeria this year, I tell you the truth under God, you are joking. I love Nigeria. Are we together? I'm a very loyal citizen of this nation. But this is prophecy it's an unfolding of events some things will happen the only thing is that there is an exemption the power to prosper please you, you we, when it's time to pray you will cry it in your life that's what makes you different from unbelievers are we together that's the only condition where you can look at your life and give god glory you say no i know the school fees of my children before i will go to pay it someone has paid it and he will never tell you who he is 
write it again if you did not write it the ultimate proof that the anointing to prosper is upon your life is the ministry of men the ministry of helpers not just business ideas it takes men to make things happen have you not seen people with ideas and they died with their ideas someone called pastor Tunde Bakare and told him he said I love you and I've invested 200 million in an investment for you it's just growing whenever you need it they can talk to you and he said what for he said I'm okay and the man said no I had to do it you are my pastor Hi. when a man argues with you about blessing you there is such a thing and we are going to pray there are many other anointings the power listen the power to heal the sick there are three I'm going to teach us ah, there's no time let me just go straight to the three that the Lord told me that's number one the power to prosper number two are you ready it's called resurrection power don't claim you know what it is just listen to me resurrection power is about the apex the zenith of a man's manifestation of the anointing what is resurrection the ability to make dead things come back to life is the hallmark of creation are we together let me tell you something there is resurrection power the bible says Ephesians please help us Ephesians 1 verse 17 we are reading down to 20 for this call Paul says for this cause I Paul I bow my knees right to the father of glory that he may give unto you listen the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him next verse the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light he said that he may what know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints here it comes verse 19 read it if you're a christian one to go and what is the exceeding greatness of his what power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power what mighty power next verse which he wrought in christ when he what raised him the power that can raise a thing that has died is power indeed the power that can heal what is alive is power but the power that can raise what is dead come on you carry that anointing and enter a lifeless environment and something gives life Isaiah 32 verse 15 we are praying this one scripture and then we we'll stand up and pray let me show you that there is an ability that can bring life to dead things it is called resurrection power brothers and sisters get this anointing and your life will change no matter what it is it's a matter of time and influence upon you read it 32 one to read until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then what happens and the wilderness be counted for a fruitful vine uh -huh. and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest that's the power of resurrection you step into a desert place spirit have your way in us today spirit take your throne as we are changed spirit have your way Ezekiel chapter 37 
there is an anointing that can restore I tell you I feel the anointing of the spirit Ezekiel 37 the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me in the spirit listen and set me down in the midst of a valley that was full of what? Bones. No structure. This power of restoration together with the power of resurrection and the power to prosper will make you indomitable. Believe me. Verse 2. Verse 2. And cause me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many bones. And they were what? Very dry. Listen, you will step into the life of people with age long issues. The devil has stolen from them. It's not just that the situation is dead, it was stolen then son of man verse 3 he says can these bones live and he says only thou knowest verse 4 this is one key to releasing the anointing and he said unto me prophesy speak Hagar speak command Hagar instruct compel let it be upon these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones who speaks to bones who speaks to bones dogs eat bones men throw bones God speaks to bones it says hear ye the word of the Lord and then let's read verse 5 and behold, I will cause bread to enter you. Go to verse 7. So I prophesied, not as I wanted, as I was commanded. And there was what? A noise. The same noise in Acts chapter 2 verse 1. There was a sound. And behold, a shaking. And the Bible says, and behold, bones came together. This is not just resurrection. This is restoration. Are we together? We are going to pray. Hold hands together. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to blast in tongues like an angry man who is tapping into power. Lift your voice and pray. Pray like a man, like a woman. Who is about to take delivery of unction to function place?
Alléluia. Alléluia. I like you to look in one minute at your life. See the barriers that have stood before you. Because they are about to be smashed into pieces. Something is about to come upon your life. That will move you forward. Something is about to come upon your life. That will drive you to the next level. Something is about to come upon your life. The power to run. The power to run. The power to run. Please lift your hands. Listen, it is not about falling down. Don't be distracted with falling down. Open your spirit and receive something that will change your life. Don't just focus on falling down. The Holy Ghost is doing his thing. But beyond falling down, open up your heart to receive. Children, adults, don't say no. Some people cannot receive. You have a child, stand for them. Don't say they cannot receive. Hallelujah. Paul said, For I long to see you, that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. Lift your hands, I want to pray for you. The glory of God is revealed in a man when there is an anointing. Right now in the name that is above all names. I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic office. And I declare that at the count of three. By the ministry of angels. By the unction. By the ministry and the mystery that surrounds this office right now at the count of three I declare that this unction fall inside and outside online and everywhere one, two three, take it take it take it right now receive it power receive it Fire Shakababa Katalababa inside the overflows right now, right now, right now. Every row, every row, every column, every row. The thousands following online. I release it upon you. You that are listening in your home, you that are listening in your room. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost in your life, in your ministry, in your business. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power. Take it now. Lift your hand. There is an anointing called the power to prosper. Lift your hands and receive it. I pray for you now. Shaka Paratai. I have seen this in my life. I have seen this in this ministry. 
the ministry of man making your life easy right now in the name of Jesus receive the power to prosper take the power to prosper take the power to prosper in your ministry take the power to prosper in your job the power to prosper in your academics the power to prosper in your business the power to prosper by this anointing every struggle in your life where you labor by yourself for result it comes to an end this night it comes to an end this night number two the power that can quicken things if that same spirit which raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body that same spirit will revitalize ay, 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 ay. will revitalize hallelujah the Lord is giving me a sign for many of you to be your right hand I don't know what I'm saying but your right hand in a supernatural way your right hand I see the right hand of many people shaking this is what the Lord is showing me right now that anointing for resurrection all over this auditorium take it now take it now take it now take it now every dead thing come alive come alive Talita Kumi come alive Talita Kumi dead academics that relationship Jews build it and they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai. They went forward through the prophesying. They got jobs through the prophesying. They carried their miracle children through the prophesying. They received mantles and graces through the prophesying. Their lives turn around through the prophesying. Make sure you are praying. spirit come hold this for me no Ejimi, don't worry let him do it hold the tray not the water put it down and hold the tray this is how words are in the realm of the spirit it is not the words that bless you the words carry things words are trays in the spirit it is not the words that bless you 
the words contain mysteries so the word can carry a course the word comes to you and returns back but the course remains the word was a messenger the word can carry a blessing you can receive the word it returns back because words are living so they move when they come they go back words don't remain it is what they carry that remains so shall my word be that goeth forth i send it as a messenger when it delivers it returns back and says i have done what you sent me to do then he sends the word on errand again listen words are not just talkings because when isaac listen blessed jacob esau came and said don't you have any other thing he said it is finished was the talking finished so words are not just speaking you are a boy yes you said that is word in english but in the realm of the spirit words are the factors in speakings that contain spirit and life so i can sit down here and put favor on a word and send it as a messenger the courier system is called prophecy So you can the moment you see words coming to you you start rejoicing because you know that the words is like it's like you know i i i do a lot of conga and jumia and sometimes they just call me and say we are within vicinity can we come and the moment i hear the sound of their van do i need the van do i need the package the package that comes will say conga I quickly open the package then there is another package I open everything till I get what I'm looking for that thing the van will return back because it needs to come back again but what it brought it is what stays with me many of us waste words because we think it is in the speaking be blessed that thing is not the English It's just a word prophesied to you it transported something spiritual so when it enters your ears the thing that was attached with it drops in your spirit and then the be blessed english now just goes out so you know that words were spoken and then you can't even remember everything that was said in the service but then you go back and find out your life starts changing someone who has no business blessing you and you say lord when did that happen that is why deafness is a terrible thing are we together now that you cannot hear the word cannot come the entrance of thy word so listen to me understand how this works come stand here this gentleman just stand there this is favor this is what this guy wants this is favor this is what he desperately needs and God carries that favor and puts it upon words and the messenger is not a prophet the messenger is the prophecy the prophecy is what brings it to him as many as received him meaning you can reject him the word can come but you will say it's not trade that I want I need this and then the word returns back with the gift and say I was rejected when I got to that address then when you pray again God will say by my mercy let's try again and the word comes and you don't receive it and it goes back he sent forth his word when they received the word the word he led them the word delivered them so he sent forth healing he sent forth deliverance but they were carried in a tray called words this is the mystery men receive that's why when you see people talk about the word word most people even those who teach it they don't even really fully understand what they are saying they think it is speakings that gives you intelligence no words convey information they convey thoughts but that's not the only thing they do they are mighty systems of impartation words i can be sitting here right now and yet i'm ministering to someone outside because the minister is really not me the minister is the word 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means no matter where you are, the moment the words begin to come, and the way God designed it is that it is your faith that determines what is put on that word. So I can sit down and say, Lord, send me a word for my breakthrough. And God will say, that's it. Everyone that asks it, receive it. And he puts that word. And you will hear me speak casually in the name of Jesus. Let doors be open. And you say, that's it. You did not see that that word was carrying something. You receive that word. The miracle in it will start working. You don't receive the healing. You receive the word. The healing was designed to work when the word is received. When you enter a city Jesus was teaching, find out whether they be a house of peace. When you find it there, he says, let what is on you rest there. When you don't find anybody that receives you, let your peace rest with you. Meaning there are things that rest, return, are received, are rejected. These are some of the things that govern the results that we get. Look at the wonderful, that adorable lady that shared her testimony from Lagos. Words transcend time and distance and she can receive that word for her brother or friend and HIV of 24 years. When the word gets to HIV, HIV is a spirit so it knows it's not words that is seen. Remember when men saw the word, they saw a man. When demons saw the word, they saw the life-giving power of God. They looked at Jesus and ah, is he not? This guy, this, this 33 year old body is fooling people. This is not 33 year old. This is the ancient of days. Hidden in a 33 year old body. But men were looking at the son of Mary. But principalities and powers knew what they were seeing. When a prophet saw Jesus, he said, behold the lamb. You would think it's an insult. You are calling me an animal. He was speaking prophetically. The same way you can look at Gideon and say, oh mighty man of valor. And Gideon says, where are you seeing this? Because the word is also a mirror. The same way native doctors use water and look at your destiny, you can use the word and look. There's a beautiful picture most of you have seen of a young cat that looks at itself through a mirror and sees a lion. Very powerful. So you can come here weak and then... God comes to you and says, no, you are not supposed to be that. And he says, this is your image. And he says, Lord, I agree. I see it. The word is received. The power, as many as received that word, he gave them power that came with the word to become. Power to become. As many as received him, even to them that called upon his name, he gave them power to become. Power to become an apostle. Power to become a prophet. Power to become prosperous. Power to rise and shake whatever it is that brought you down. Power to silence the voices of darkness. Thank you. This is how fathers blessed throughout the Bible. All the sons knew that they didn't, they didn't wish for any inheritance of goat or sheep. They gave them those things, but they knew it was temporal. But the moment they received something on their head, the fathers told them bye-bye and never cared to find out, are you doing well? Because they knew that what they sent them with was designed to make sure that all things work together. Let me tell you, if someone counts, come, Sam, come, this lady. If this is a husband and wife and you greet all of them and give them plates huh? or you give them cup or a set of tea, you gave them gifts, not a blessing. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. They will carry those things and somebody can steal it. But when you speak over their lives, those words remain and start working. So this guy was supposed to fail. Remember, when he gets to the place where he wants to fail, that word is a spiritual buffer. It starts doing something to him to make sure he goes away from trouble. There was supposed to be trouble. Ordinarily, he would have been a victim. But something that was on him will move him. The Lord knows how to deliver the righteous. There is something that you can receive. And where there is a job that is your own, 
you find yourself moving there you are not moving something is moving you there this is what creates favor in life it looks like a repetition of coincidences everything good that is about to happen you call them they say i just heard about it must you hear about everything good then th that grace makes sure that nothing good passes you without you not hearing it the same way someone can put something negative on this lady and she will come someone wants to marry her and what is on her will make sure that guy hates her and everything destroys i say what is is it that i'm not beautiful it's not about beauty it's about what happened that's why the bible says god can deliver men from six things yes seven things one of it is the scourging tongues of men that men can use words to program something on you and just say go now you will because you didn't feel anything that word remains this gentleman is standing here he's supposed to marry her but something on her is fighting him you are supposed to get a job the person promised heaven and said and just a signature to get that job but something on you make sure that your paper is taken away from the list this is what we came to correct tonight that by the power of prophecy that that something can come upon your life and you will walk out of here and see things that should not happen someone can look at you and say man of god you are not supposed to move at this spiritual rate when did you get born again and he says it's not my fault it's what is on me something on me draws the right people and you find out listen listen that's why you find out there are churches you always find the right keyboardist the right drummer they are looking for pastors you find the right pastors and it's not as if the people are eloquent enough to look for them there is a spirit somebody enters that town and says i want to come and fellowship with koinonia they didn't just come the day you are announcing your book that's the day the richest helper in your life is forced to come to the city he didn't just come something on you controls everything around you so the key is not to try to change things buy a new shoe with a negative word on your head that negative word will tear that shoe and return you back to the way they prophesied on your life please take serious what i'm saying many arrogant believers will not hear this and will continue to move in circles and circles of shame and regret in this kingdom we build but we prosper and finish what we are building through the power of prophecy hallelujah you have applied for the job you have submitted it there's nothing you can do about it again you don't even have access to the office you can't call the director why don't you send words let words enter that office like an armed robber and search where is her file and sit on it listen remember you can't get to the office but there's something that can get there i'm not motivating you believe me and that word will rest on your employment letter and the, the man is pushing everything and he just picks yours now remember the man may not be born again so he can't explain what is happening because he operates in the three-dimensional realm the word and the miracle of favor in it is speaking to his spirit man and because he's empowered by god's integrity he must hear it and he looks and says who is this what tribe ah i the slot is for five people from the north who is this yoruba girl now who knows maybe she doesn't have a father or mother and they take this and you get a job that you sit down and say ah, ah, what is this again if you don't believe this then i welcome you to the realm of hardship and suffering where you can almost lose your salvation because of the squalor that comes upon arrogant people you see people that you think don't deserve it but they are childlike enough to allow words go before them are we together in the bible every time fathers were releasing their children they would tell them place your hand upon my thigh and they would place their hand and speak speak over their lives and say i've finished go whoever comes again they say the word has finished 
I can talk to you. I can counsel you. But if it's that thing you are looking for, it has finished. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Because we're going to be very, very fast tonight. And I want you to believe. The moment words are coming, don't just hear them as amplified sounds from a public address system. They are spirits. You have to discern it. They are spirits. Oh, may God lift you. It's not just by shouting amen. May God lift you. So the word is coming with a grace for lifting. You receive the word, but you are searching. Where is the grace? And that grace is on you. You go expecting to be lifted. It's as if life owes you lifting. Because there is a word there. And you will be surprised to see the way things just open. Are you ready to pray? Find a corner in the next two, three minutes. I'd like you to declare. Declare and pray. Please pray. Take it seriously. The things that must shift in your life. The things that must change in your life. Is called a miracle service. Especially for those of you who came from far. Please believe. Lord, let something come upon my life tonight that will give me speed. Come upon my life that will give me joy, that will bring me breakthrough. I tap into this mystery that is in the book of Ezra. I'm willing to build, but Lord, I know that I will prosper through the prophesyings. Prosper through the prophesyings. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. Yes. 
they can erase yokes, they can erase witchcraft, they can erase pronouncements. Someone spoke against you, spoke against your family, and said it will never be good with you. Words are erasers. For some of us, before you need something to come upon you, you need something to be taken out of you. Open your mouth and pray and say something must be erased from my destiny. Those negative dreams, bad luck. I love the Lord. I serve him with all my heart. Blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. He nailed it to the cross. social media platforms and a system was programmed that when you forget your password there are times that you want to access your mail or whatever page and for some reason you can forget your password there is a provision there it will ask you have you forgotten your password and then it will try to do one two three things and give you another opportunity to put a new password or remind you of the password you forgot. If in the physical recovery is possible, then how, how much more the realm of the spirit? Someone tonight is going to insist. You, it left you to a point that you are not even thinking of it again. And God is saying, no, Lazarus must come back home. You must find it again. Before I begin to pray, open your mouth. Whatever left me that should not leave me, you must return back. Opportunities, dimensions in the spirit. Glory, the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you're the lifter up of my head. Hey, but thou, O oh Lord, had a shield. I want you to cooperate with me. I want us to finish very fast. And so tonight I may not really have time to prophesy and speak to people one by one because it would take time. But I want you to please believe. Are we together? Words can bring things and words can carry things out of your life. Was it not because Jonah entered a boat? Innocent people on a voyage. A man carried something, entered their boat. They lost properties, lost. They were about to lose their life, and they said, "What is the cause of this?" 
And Jonah said, I'm the one. The solution, he didn't say, counsel me. Throw me out of that boat. There are things that you don't patch, you don't manage. They must be thrown out completely. There are pronouncements, you must carry them. And say, I saw you destroy my father, my mother. You are going out of my By the spirit of might, in the name of Jesus, that you will do a quick walk in this place. I pray, oh God, that within the next few minutes, visit your people. Let it not just be a ritual, but Lord, that you will visit them. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will visit them. I'm going to count five just now. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't do anything. Once I count five, I'm seeing a fire of deliverance. We're going to start with it because people must be set free. I truly believe in emancipation. And the Lord is giving me an instruction to just count five. And then I begin to speak. One, two. The things of the spirit are very strange. I want you to bring them out. Three, my God. I sense such fire. I'm already even seeing four. Get ready now. Five. Let that fire right now. In the name of Jesus. Everything in your life that must leave. I declare right now. By the power that is in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, bring them out. Outside, everywhere, overflow. One, two, three. The roadside online. I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the Word of God brings every evil from out of their hiding place. I declare and I prophesy. I send the word like a messenger of judgment into every family, into every destiny. And I declare that everything that needs to be judged will not escape the fire of God tonight. Therefore, I declare judgment, judgment upon the hand of the wicked. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Judgment upon the wicked. Judgment upon the wicked. Hallelujah. The spirit I'm taking charge over now are the forces responsible for closed doors. Listen, over life, if you have seen that you stand and a door refuses to open, no matter what you do, something is about to happen to you now. Lift your hands. Father, I declare, anyone here who is under the yoke of a spirit that causes closed doors, shakatabata, now you are ready to shout at the count of three in the name of Jesus. I judge that spirit. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. I command those spirits. I challenge those forces. I send the word. Doors open. Ordinances. Close doors. Let doors be open now. Over lives, over destinies. Be open now. Outside. Be open inside. Be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people and I'm seeing chains on their feet. And I'm seeing literal fire like rising from the ground of this auditorium and I'm going to speak now when I speak those chains that I see you will be amazed at the testimonies that will rise from this month's miracle service Lord Jesus I declare anyone being tied down by any chain I declare right now let the fire of the it could be chains that are territorial. It could be chains of wickedness. I command a release right now. In the name of Jesus, I command a release right now. I command a release right now. A release right now. A release right now. what I'm seeing now for a long time and then I think last miracle service or so 
I saw it again. It's, it's a sign and wonder, and I don't know why God does it. I'm seeing a map before me now, and I'm seeing Kogi State. Kogi State. You know what happens when God shows me this? That means people from that state, the power of God begins to touch them. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare the fire of God is going to that state, and I declare freedom right now. There are ordinances and yokes within that region. When you are from that region, the power of God meets you. I decree and declare now, in the name of Jesus Christ, complete freedom, complete freedom. The power of God is still coming, Kogi State. I decree and I declare, if there is anything that is not the planting of the Lord in any of those regions, I uproot it now by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out, please. Overflow one, lift your hands. I stretch my hands right now. I'm seeing a very strange fire. People will start running from overflow one. I'm, I've not prayed that prayer, but I'm seeing a grace for speed. This is the spirit of delay being broken. Overflow one, in the name of Jesus, I declare, may that grace come upon people right now. They will begin to run by the spirit. Run by the spirit. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. But the Lord is asking me to stand here. I'm standing here and I'm seeing right here, just right here. I'm seeing there is something the angel of the Lord is doing right here. I decree and I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus. Let the yokes of darkness, the ordinances of witchcraft, let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. for sick people now but I'm seeing the Lord is telling me he's taking away objects from people's bodies physical objects movements around the body that you feel movements around the body right now I declare anyone who has those experiences I stretch my hands now I stretch my hands now the Lord is saying I should stand here in the name of Jesus any movement in the name of Jesus, Sakato Barakata, and Takata, Rakata Bakatos, movements in the body. I cause it now in the name of Jesus. Everything that is not of God in anyone's body around here, I take it out of your body now. I take it out of your body now. Look at me, my dear, this lady. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands now. I saw fire coming on you. Right now, I declare that devil must let you go i release you now by the power of the holy ghost now be set free in the name of jesus all those in front i declare the count of three the spirits that manifested must let you go i speak as one sent from god at the count of three let them go one two three go 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 out of their lives and out of their destinies in the name of Jesus Christ how many people are trusting God for jobs you are trusting God for a job just keep your hands lifted I just saw something that looked like a parcel we are going to pray for the sick but I'm stretching my hands. Fire is leaving my hands. I'm seeing from the realm of the spirit. And it's come, not everybody. But in the name of Jesus. Lord, those that are designed to receive 
miracle jobs through these impartations. Where are they, oh God? I send your anointing. Kalato Seba Hasha. of lifting has come. Lift your hands. I'm looking at you. Where's your wife? Wife, come. Look at, oh, what a wonderful wife. Again, her husband. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak and I prophesy to you here. Look at what is happening to them. I declare by the anointing of the Spirit, the month of November, two of you will come to testify here. The God of heaven is turning your lives around. One, finances, Two, I'm seeing you climbing ladders in the spirit. And I decree and declare over you. It must be so right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. If I start speaking one by one time. Sir, please come. This man. Come, sir. God is about to change your life. Come. Where are you? Please stand up. Please stand up, sir. Where are you coming from? from Sabongari, I want to pray for you. Where do you stay? Sir, I don't mean to scare you. Are we together now? I'm not a prophet of doom. But this you're coming here now has saved you from dying. You have been having dreams. You have been having dreams dreams. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Dead people. Yes, you see dead them. people in dreams. I have seen them. This is what I'm saying. If you did not come here, I saw that you were somewhere around PZ and a car just came. You're on a bike and that car just hit you and just killed you. That's how they left you on the ground there. But in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the spirit behind, why am I saying God is saving families from the spirit of death? I just saw like an arrow right now. Any family here any family I'm seeing like arrows of death I reverse them you will know because I'm praying for you I declare now now any family that the devil has found that there must be an obituary I command in the name of Jesus Christ freedom death leave the God's people in the name of Jesus God of wonders will do wonders in their lives. I agree with them very quickly. Please don't doubt what you are doing. Those who are standing, trust God to touch you. Trust God to return with a testimony. Who have come with all kinds of situations. Arise, O God, in your power. Wrought wonders. In the name of Jesus, let your people return with testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Quickly, please. Please. Um, except the people speak to you and I would, please let there be minimal um, personal speakings because we have to rush. As hands are laid on you, please believe. Don't say it's not apostle that is laying hands on me. It's a corporate grace that is working here. And for those of us who are seated, the worship team will be ministering, but don't just sit and just be looking I like you to believe because immediately after this I'll be doing the prophecy and the impartation and we'll be trusting God to turn things around. If you have your prayer request while the service is going on, whether you are here or just wave it and then there will be people PR protocol. Please join the people so that we'll make it fast. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. And as we worship in your presence there is he the Holy Spirit gentle touch is flowing, Jesus, I believe, Jesus, there is healing in your name. Now. And as we worship
Say in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree and declare that every delayed promise, say it again, that every delayed promise must manifest before the end of this month. Lift your voice and pray. Pray, pray, delayed promise. Make sure you are praying. Every delayed promise in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Hold on. Medically speaking, after nine months, when they give a woman EDD, sometimes it can seem to cross with a few weeks. The doctors give plus or minus. Is that true? And by the time it exceeds, it becomes an issue of concern. And then the doctors have a system where they can induce the woman or at least go through CS. It doesn't matter how that blessing must arrive. Lord, I declare it is time for me to walk in it. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Every prepared blessing that the prophetic word of God has made available, I step into. Jesus, I receive the grace to discern my miracle. Because you see, sometimes a miracle may not come in a way that you see it. Are we together now? Who would have known that it was the little jar in the house of the woman who was already owing that will save her? Sometimes your miracle is there. But God must open your eyes. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive discernment. Cause my eyes to be open. To see my miracle in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cause my eyes to be open.
the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point. I'd like you to declare. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, bring speed to my destiny. Let me tell you something. Except you are not living on planet earth. There are times that God will desire for certain things to happen in your life. But for whatever reason, those seasons can pass and you will not step into it. Now, God must give you speed to be able to catch up with what matches the pace of your life. Pray this prayer and you will watch God answer. Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, for my years of delay, I receive supernatural speed. In every area of my life, open your mouth and mention every area of your life. Lord, I would have gotten admission 10 years ago, but for some reason I was delayed. Give me speed. Give me speed. this is not a ritual this is not a formality there is an anointing there is a grace there is a covenant that makes for this request to be answered prayers paul said for this cause i paul bow my knees i bow my knees i bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees, that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees, that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees, that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees, that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees, that he may grant unto you. Visit impossible situations, O God of heaven. name of 
of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have brought strange miracles to men and women by reason of this mystery. Father, I declare there are people here who have written things that only you can solve. Things that if we see with the eyes of men, it will even challenge our faith. My God, surprise everyone. Please agree with me. Surprise everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let every need represented here, whatever that need is, I agree right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let every need here be turned into a miracle. Any human agent that has vowed that this request will not be answered, may the fire of judgment come upon them now. Remember, all blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men away from you. All blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men. So whether it's from God or from Satan, men play a role. I say it again in the name of Jesus. Everybody who the devil wants to use to play a negative role, to sabotage what God has answered, what he has done in your life, let the fire of judgment rest upon them now. Let me give you an instance. If God destines that you are the one who will lift your family out and be great, and Satan programs a man with a gun to kill you, you know what that man has done? He didn't just kill you. He stopped the word of God from coming to pass in your family. I'm saying it again. Any human agent, if you don't like it, just say amen to the one you believe. But any human agent that stands the way of prophecy over your life, may the word of God rest like fire upon them. When a man is supposed to give you a job and gets angry because something happened and packs all the employment letter and shelves it and they forget about it for the next two years. The guy to help Joseph came out and forgot him for two years. It was after two years by the mercy of God he said, I remember my wrong. So he acknowledged it was wrong. I pray whoever has forgotten you that must remember you, may they remember their wrong. And may they correct it. Every anointing and every grace that God preordained that should be resting upon your life, your ministry right now, and by some activity of darkness, it has not yet touched your head. I declare, may that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. Remember what I taught you about words. Never forget, words are trains. God is serving you something. He's only using words. Are you ready to receive the prayer of favor again? Don't say you have said it before. Remember that they build and they prosper through the prophesying. Not once. Jesus, your Jesus, touched the eyes of a man. And he said, what do you see? This is the word touching a man's eyes. He said, I'm seeing, but I see men like trees. Jesus said, nonsense. He touched his eyes again. And he saw men clearly. If he, if he was left like that, listen, we want, to, we want to destroy the spirit 
that are bought complete miracles. So the miracle starts in your life but never finishes. Have you seen people like that? It starts in your life but never finishes. In the name of Jesus. Because according to scripture, if the hand of Zerubbabel starts a thing, that hand should complete it. I'm praying right now. Every miracle that has started, when Elijah saw the rain like the fist of a man's hand, it didn't stop as a fist. It became an abundance of rain. Therefore, I declare, what you have seen like the fist of a man's hand, it must come to completion in your life. It must come to completion in your life. So you get a job, but they say you need an interview. You pass stage one. You pass stage two. They even give you small pocket money and you are happy. It's almost as if you are employed. Then when the final list comes out, your name is not there. A lady sent me a text crying that a gentleman came and paid her dowry and ran away. What did he do? He paid her dowry and ran away. It's better that that lady were never married than the one that you gathered people, they paid your dowry, then he ran away. Let me say it again. The Bible says, he that has begun this good work, except it's not a good work, what my God has started in your life, in the name of Jesus, it must come to end. Let me pray for your family that in the name of Jesus, whatever has brought pain to your family, whatever has brought shame, whatever has brought distress, right now I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. We come from different families and we know the various challenges that we left from our different families. Therefore, I prophesy to you right now in the name of Jesus that every challenge you left from your family, let that challenge be turned into a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Now, let me prophesy a very serious prophecy for you. Everything you saw from January that God vowed with his integrity in the place of your retreat, he showed you things. You know it's not guesswork. You know that God told you certain things but you have not seen it come to pass. I release my faith with you and I command October to deliver the result for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everyone who is in ministry here, I want to pray for you. Whether it's an evangelical ministry, you are a missionary, you are into a prophetic ministry, whatever is making it to not work or whether it's a prayer group a fellowship i stretch my hands i strengthen your hands in the spirit fresh fire upon the work that you do in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone in anger who made any pronouncement over your life it could even be your biological parents I stand here by the privilege of the prophetic and the apostolic and I declare that that statement is erased from your life. Those in business, I pray for you. I decree and declare. The spirit that brings fruitless labor you labor so much and yet nothing comes to fruition. I cast that spirit from its root now. Let me pray again in the name of Jesus that everyone trusting God for a miracle job, I don't care how long you have waited, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, I speak to you. May the Lord surprise you. is showing me a medical doctor that an appointment is coming from, from Abuja, one of the hospitals in Abuja. 
as I just prayed this prayer, I saw it in the spirit. We establish it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone, nobody has ever truly applied for a visa and gotten it in your family. It doesn't matter how many times they apply. And the reasons are legitimate. I speak by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. May the favor of God open the doors of nations for you. Hallelujah. One way the spirit of poverty, listen, eats up resources from people is through the mystery of terminal illness. Illness that your money must finish before the person now dies. Are we together now? It's a wicked spirit. Because you can't sit down and watch your loved one in pain. You will liquidate everything you have to help them. When the entire family is drained, then the person just goes. I declare, if there is anyone with any terminal illness that is sapping resources from your family, may the healing power of Jesus touch them and quicken them now. Favor is a spirit. I stretch my hands and I declare in the name of Jesus from today, carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. In one minute, wherever you are, open your mouth and let's pray for Kaduna State. Blood sucking spirit will curse you. Pray. We declare peace upon our borders. Pray for the families that have been bereaved. Lord, by your mercy, let there be peace. We prophesy peace in Zaria, peace in Kaduna State, peace in Jos, peace in Adamawa, peace in Benue. In the name of Jesus, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. We fortify our spiritual borders. Please pray. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Kaduna, hear the word of the Lord. Let there be peace. We pray for the spirit of love. We pray for the spirit of love. The spirit of unity. Christians, Muslims, free thinkers. That together in the name of Jesus. There will be a bond of peace. Hallelujah. Number one. Make sure you do not use the social media platform to your detriment and the detriment of the church. Are we together? Passing nasty comments and things that may not make sense that can aggravate um, crisis and all of this. We are matured believers. We must have the wisdom to be able to respond. This is not about Christians. It's not truly about Muslims. It's about the devil finding agents masquerading through religion and politics to destroy the program of God. So the issue is not just about Christians. It's not just about Muslims and all of this. My perspective as a person has always been to demonstrate love because we believe no human being, regardless of religion, acts wicked on his own accord. They are motivated by dark spirits that manipulate their minds. So when we challenge, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we speak and settle realities in the realm of the spirit. These are the spirits that can use anybody. If brothers kill brothers, then anybody can kill anybody. When the spirits are at work, our responsibility as believers is to challenge the controlling powers that manipulate the destinies of people. Number two, please, there are families that have lost loved ones. If there is any way you can support them, whether in prayer or through whatever means, it is a very welcome development. Are we together? And then finally, I would encourage us, we have prayed, but we are responsible people. It is wise to be vigilant, especially for those who live within the Kaduna metropolis and then Jos, Adamawa, Benway. We will continue to pray and speak peace 
it says give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem so we will continue to pray but it's wise to be vigilant because there are certain kinds of death the bible calls the death of a fool are we together now it is wise that we are vigilant by god's grace whatever information we have a brilliant intelligence system that feeds me with whatever information and if there is any cause for concern or any action there is an intelligent system to reach everyone avoid spreading rumors and avoid moving around your job is just to continue to pray for believers that have for any reason gone to be with the lord it shouldn't start creating a subject of debate where we argue and do a lot of childish things when believers go to be with the lord let's stand by the families and encourage them and speak words of hope while we continue speaking life let me balance this because if if god forbid but if i die today it does not cancel the fact that long life is the will of god for the saints so on one side while you weep and mourn for what has happened the word of god is bigger than any man i'm saying this because sometimes satan uses these things to discourage the body of christ let god be true and every man including the best of us be a liar so make sure you continue to stand on your convictions be sympathetic to people don't be emotionless about the things that happen to people but maintain your stand and your conviction about the integrity of what god has said should be are we together now i speak to everyone here the covenant of protection you have to know the blessings that accrue to this ministry that you are part of i declare in the name of jesus the grace that has protected us the grace that has protected this this ministry may that grace speak in your life i forbid the earth nor the sword from receiving your body in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you like we prophesy october is not done yet between now and 31st of october in the name of jesus the balance of what must enter your hand may the god of heaven arise and put it in your hand You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There was a brief charge today. And while you were speaking, the Spirit of the Lord was convicting me that I need Jesus. Or number two, that I need to make my ways right with Jesus. I love Jesus, but I feel a need for a restoration. Please, wherever you are, we have just a minute or two for you. I'd like you to boldly leave your seat Please, every time we make an altar call like this, give the people chance to come. Don't intimidate them. Let there be no movings and let the people come. Wherever you are, you are saying, Apostle, if you will lead me to Jesus, I will gladly hand over my life to him. Wherever you are, I want to pray for you. Please leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here. God bless you for your boldness. People are coming. Outside, are you coming? Make your way quickly. God bless you. Make your way. Jesus is talking to someone. This is a time when you should hearken to his voice. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you're coming from outside, please run. You will need to double up. Run quickly. I want to pray now. Let's celebrate those who are coming. Let's encourage them. No man comes to Jesus except you are drawn by him. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. There are still a few people. We give you a few seconds. Run quickly. Join them. Those online, you're connecting online, be ready to pray the prayer with us. There's no time, there's no distance. God bless you, keep coming. I see a gentleman coming, I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I salute all of you who are standing, whether giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or rededicating your life. May the Lord bless you. Lift your right hand quickly. Those joining, join quickly. I'd like you to say this sincerely from your heart. Jesus is here and he loves you. Always ready to give you a new beginning. The Bible says to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Look at this, my adorable children. Make sure you say, Lord Jesus, too, dear ones. Say, Lord Jesus. 
I believe in you that you are the son of God tonight I accept that I cannot help myself and I ask that you be my savior you be my Lord you be my king I believe that Jesus died for me I believe he was raised from the dead for my justification right now I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that I am saved I'm a child of God amen Jesus thank you for these ones you have drawn them by your spirit let the grace that saves let the grace that keep rest upon these ones in the name of Jesus Christ they will go from glory to glory I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the door is open for you to a new and a better life in the name of Jesus from today you move forward ever and backward never in Jesus name I pray amen I salute you once again thank you for this very bold decision please follow the lady smiling at you with her hands waving at you just follow her and there will be a group of people to just address you please cooperate with them very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you